check our, our data, our default block grid. And in our x direction, we have lots of space. So we can leave that as 10. Um, our y direction, let's reduce this to 5 meters. And our z direction, we'll keep that at 5 meters as well. So this is our block size. We can change our block size here. Um, we can make these smaller if we wanted, but this seems fine for now. Um, and we can take a look at our discretization here. So why don't we switch it to 2222? Two, two, two. Um, before I had it at 221, and that's because I had 10105, and I figured I didn't need to split the Z direction anymore, but with 1055, we can just have 2222, it's fine. Um, all right, so let's click OK. We're going to press B on our keyboard, and it's going to open up our block model list. And we're going to click New, File, New. All right, do you want to import the schema and grid from an existing block model? No, we don't have any other existing block models. Um, and I, I, so we're just going to click No. If we did have another block model, this could be a really good thing. If we wanted to create a template for a block model, we could import the schema from an existing template uh, for multiple block models that we created. But for this example, we're going to click no. And we're going to take a look at the different block model parameters. So we have in our schema, super indexed, fixed density, classification, type, and our copper. Also, we have a um, add predefined variable. So here we have a bunch of other predefined variables that we could or add to our block model. Um, this is the best time to add them because if we already created the block model, then we won't have this information. So for example, the sample average distance, we can have that, we could have the pass number. Um, this azimuth dip spin is something that we use for our um, variable ellipsoid modeling. We're not going to do that right now. That's one of the advanced topics. Uh, if you wanted to know information about the different Krieging, say the standard error, we're likely not going to do Krieging in this example, but maybe if we were going to do Krieging, we want to know the standard error, we can make a variable for that. So let's click OK. We have those variables already predefined. Notice here we also have a set optimization variable. Um, the set optimization variables are typically for optimizing open pit. Um, that's out of the scope of this particular tutorial, uh, but it's good to note that you can come in here and have those types of variables for optimizing open pit. So we'll just click cancel. Okay. And then we can go to our block grid. It's our block grid here, block model origin, block size, discretization, and these he values here will be ca calculated automatically. Um, we notice here the transformation, we could apply a transformation. We're not going to apply a transformation at this time, but we could have a rotation or something there. Um, and we could limit our block model to an envelope. Um, so for example, let's click our new envelope here. And that's the envelope that we created the last time. And we can limit our block model to that envelope. If we would like, we could uh, calculate fractional blocks. Um, so if we wanted to have blocks that were near the boundaries of the envelope, they could be fractional in nature. Uh, we're not going to do that for this particular one. And we can use a fixed density, which we are using, and our fixed density is 2.7. So click OK. And we've created a new block model. And let's call it block model 1. And we'll leave it shaded. Go ahead. Good. Click OK, go back home, we'll set our block model on, we have our block model here, we could look at it on 
on the different sections. We can look at it in our plan view. 